a very warm welcome also on my behalf. As you can already tell by my accent, I am from Austria. And today I will talk about information security and why it is relevant to compliance. We already heard in previous talks that data protection is something that companies have to deal with. Data protection, at least to some part, is also relevant for information security. You have to protect sensitive data of um, your employees and other natural persons. You're supposed to establish a platform for communication where people can report problems and things. However, this platform has to be secured as well because if this platform gets hacked, then you don't have to face compliance issues, but you also have a data breach and might be also facing um, damages and claims for damages. So let me give you some numbers of our latest studies. You can see them here on the slide. I will not talk about that in detail. What I think is way more important is what you can see here on this slide, namely that information security has um, a practical importance especially with relation to security incidents, some of them that, you that are listed here you might know already. You read quite a lot about information security and data breaches in the media. They sometimes mix up these topics, but all of those articles in general relate to information security. About a year ago, there was a crypto trojan that affected also some organizations in Germany. Maybe you remember on the platforms of the railway service Deutsche Bahn, you had those displays and you could read that the data had been encrypted and that you would have to pay a couple of bitcoins in order to reset the entire system and to decrypt it. So those are the rather negative effects. You might suffer some loss of reputation as a company. However, the immediate financial damage is not that big in such cases. However, there are other examples um, that are not that unproblematic. We're always talking about very targeted attacks. However, in Germany, we uh, sorry, in Austria, we have this opinion, well, who will attack my company? I'm just a very small company. Nobody can do something with my data. But today we are talking all about innovation. So if you're not an innovative company, then you will not survive very long on the market, which means you have intellectual property and um, business secrets that you have to protect. And we have a lot of collateral damages today. Since the begin of the wave of crypto trojans, a couple of years ago, we very often had the problem um, of phishing emails and companies, um, com employees surfing the web and capturing and encrypting um, Trojan. Usually this only affects one computer, so you... Um, can deal with that, but in the worst case scenario, those Trojans encrypt entire ERP systems, and then you really have a problem. There's one logistics company dealing with containers, and they have containers located worldwide. They know that they have those containers, but they know where exactly they are located. So this is a huge financial damage. So let's assume you're a company with a turnout turnover of several millions or even billions um, per year. And then you are attacked with a crypto trojan. And just imagine your company cannot be productive for three, four or five days. Your employees cannot do any work because all business critical systems are not working. So this is a, what I wanted to say about cybersecurity incidents and they're ongoing all the time. I mean, media report only report only on the very um, interesting um, cases that are also reported and published. So there is a large number of cases that we do not about because they're kept secret and a lot of other cases because they um, we do not hear about because they only affect uh, German or Austrian SMEs and we're not talking about 180 million euros in damages but only 100,000 or 150,000. I mean you would have to evaluate yourself whether this wouldn't constitute a financial damage for your own company if you're a smaller company. So what are we supposed to do? Well we need to tackle information security because this is not only about data protection and compliance. 
it helps me to defend myself as best as possible from external attacks. And information security comprises a lot of things, and I cannot talk about all of the important aspects because I would be talking all day. However, the basics when it comes to information security are, um, first, what kind of business processes do I have and how can I make them safe? What kind of support processes do I need in order to establish a safe business process overall? So I have business critical processes that I need to secure, but you also have very basic processes that are included here, for example, management processes. So you have a number of employees in your in your company and you should make sure that information is only accessed based on the need to know principle. So you need to take into account who is granting access to what, why do they grant access, who is making sure that any um, rights to access are still up to date because you might have some employees that are leaving the company within the year and very often you have an gap of information between HR and the IT department. So HR reports a co an employee leaving the company and they do everything right. And then the IT, like basically a year later, learns that the employee has left the company. Still all the rights to access when it comes to VPN, ERP and Outlook um, are still granted and active. So this is yeah, quite uncomfortable for you as a company. And of course, you need to think about um, IT security measures. There are always these ideological wars, um, IT security versus information security. We believe that IT security is part of information security, so information security extends beyond um, secure IT. In traditional secure um, IT, you need to make sure that your IT infrastructure is safe and secured. There are numerous very complex technologies that you might have to purchase in order to secure your IT systems. However, in reality, a lot of companies already struggle with the basics, the existing contents of the IT systems, the software, installing patches and updates, generating and testing data security, the learning curve when it comes to backups and data security was extremely steep, and this also really relates back to crypto trojans, a lot of companies faced the difficult situation that they were attacked with a crypto trojan. And then for the first time, they try to decide to test their data backup systems and data security. And then they just found out that their systems are not working. And they found out that over the years, they got all the important alarming notifications that the system is actually not working, but nobody assumed responsibility for this. Nobody took any action. So a lot of companies were threatened existentially. And I had the difficult task to deal with these companies and also to learn that a lot of companies were not able to make it on the market because they could not safeguard their data base and their customer base in terms of data. And then, of course, you have your defense mechanisms, so firewalls, um, prevention system. So all these kind of systems that are able to detect certain attacks, you have new systems on the market now, um, MDR systems, managed detection and responses. So all these kind of systems that detect anomalies in your system, in your network, that can warn you, notify you, and ideally also launch um, automatically first defense um, mechanism. A couple, for a lot of years, we were dealing with prevention measures when it comes to attacks. However, we always knew and we focused on that stronger in recent years um, that prevention is not everything. So, for example, when it comes to incidents response or secure hacking, the question is often, it's not a question whether I'm hacked, but only when. So you always have to assume that you will be affected at some point by a cyber incident, which is why you should not only focus on prevention, but also on measures in order to uh, detect anomalies and then again combine it with process security, what I've been talking before. So not only detect anomalies, but also have 
processes in place um, that tell you exactly what to do if you detect an incident. Because just simply panicking, informing all the employees and posting on social media that you've been hacked is not the right way to go here. But this is something that happens. A third important aspect is um, raising awareness among your um, employees. Most of the companies still need um, employees. We're not that far when it comes to automation. So you have employees. And I mean, they pose a risk of being attacked by um, Trojans or other um, security um, challenging um, attacks. I mean, they might not be doing this on purpose, but they might be subject to phishing emails, to fraud emails. And I also learned in a lot of assessments that you're, for example, if you're accessing the premise of a company, I say hello to everybody and I'm just walking around the company. I'm placing my IT system, which then automatically connect to the systems in my office. And then I have external access to the entire company and its IT network. So this is the typical uh, form of social engineering, and this exists, of course. And a lot of things just happen. You click on the wrong link, you surf on the wrong website, maybe you're sending an email to the wrong recipients. I mean, those mistakes just happen. But they might lead to a security incident or a data breach. And that is why it is vital that you train your employees in um, all your security and safety measures. You need to make sure that they're on board, that you take your employees into account, that you conduct the resp respective trainings, that you sensitize them to these risks and dangers, that you train them of how to recognize them and also how to prevent them, of course. And then we have the fourth aspect, and this also ties into what I want you to take away from today. Information security is not a project that you implement, implement once and then you're done. So it's no, not like implementing a project in 2020, then you're secure and that's uh, done and dusted. Information security must be an, a live process, an ongoing process that is continuously optimized. Those of you who have taught, who have dealt with the international safety standard um, ISO 20001, you know there was the blend and check and act cycle um, specified in this standard, and this needs to be continuously optimized. So this means ongoing testing, ongoing monitoring, and of course you might have an internal audit department who is responsible for this, but you also need to make sure that you have technological audits, maybe you have an internal department for that as well, or you just consult an internal or external auditing, just simulate an attack and learn how safe and secure you actually are. And then based on these results, you can derive further measures that you need to undertake in order to increase the security of your company. What I find is most important next to ongoing optimization are two other aspects that we already discussed today. So I really like the statement that we heard this morning, that it is a management decision of how compliant the company actually is. And that is the same, or this also is true for information security. You can spend millions of dollars in order to protect yourself and your company, but you will never achieve 100% protection. And at some point, you might... Um, having your efficiency being lowered to such an extent that your company is not profitable anymore. So when it comes to information um, security, you also have to consider the principle of proportionality. So you have to identify potential threats who might attack you. There are various groups. This is just a very broad clustering that you can see on the slide here. Everybody who's dealing with information security knows there are a lot of more of uh, gray scales and different groupings um, that you could identify here, but very broadly. So the first cluster would be hackers and script kits. I mean, they're doing what um, we are most familiar with. They go online, um, they Google, how do I hack a company? They take the first um, link that they can find and then just go about doing what is written there. And they attack very publicly um, available weak spots. 
you can protect quite easily against those groups because they can only attack what is publicly known to be a weak spot. Then we have the professional hackers, maybe researchers, um, um, can also be um, 14 to 7 year old youngsters, students and pupils who are uh, operating from the basement of their parents' house and they love to challenge themselves, they love to be a rebel. So, and they're a little bit more advanced in their expertise. And then we have the groups for targeted, targeted access. So we're financially motivated um, attacks, which are about industrial espionage. And this is something we really need to take into account. We are um, entering an economic downturn, at least a um, small one. So industrial espionage will become more and more relevant. And of course, then we have national conflicts. This is not something that is really applicable to us as companies. Cyber war is nothing new. However, we're not that strongly affected by cyber wars as private businesses. So my threat, my adversary is not in another country necessarily. But I have to identify from which clusters my potential threats actually are coming from. And then I need to decide what do I need to do in order to protect myself against these types of attacks. So what kind of appropriate measures do I need to take and how much effort in terms of resources I'm fin financing do I need? So it's a risk assessment. You need to know your risk, you need to know your threat, and then you need to decide what you want to do against it. And what is also quite important, please always also look at the bigger picture. Information security is not something that is just taking, um, very, um, that you can safeguard in a very point-wise manner. There are, for example, companies who implemented um, very strict um, security measures with regard to social engineering. So they've got a lot of monitoring systems um, focused on that. However, this doesn't help if you only have all these measures implemented at your main entrance, but the back door is still open. So you really need to assess where are your weak spots, how can you close them, and this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.